from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. The Oak Street lawsuit between Gallatin County and the city of Bozeman is finally over. Here from leaders coming up. I'm Joe St. George. The price of gasoline is up just in time for everybody to drive home for Thanksgiving. Can President Biden actually do anything about the high cost? We explain his options next. 6.30 on this uh, Monday. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with you here. Uh, setting up to be a very busy travel season. You yes. and I are going to be driving back and forth from our houses to here. Yeah, that's about it, yeah. And that, <laughs> that's my, my, to the grocery store to take care of our clan. And that's that'll about be it. about it. But uh, lots of people traveling. And uh, really, Tuesday's going to be our big impact mm -hmm. day. I'm going to talk about that in our main weather segment coming up here in about 13 minutes or so. Okay. Set your watches. Your, your mileage may vary. Yeah. <laughs> Temperatures <laughs> into the 20s this morning. A little breeze setting up, but we should see a decent amount of sunshine through the afternoon. A little bit of cloud cover trying to roll in through the warmest part of the day, but our daytime high is near the 50 degree mark for both Bozeman and Butte. Does look like a pleasant day today. Some snow maybe for tomorrow. We're going to talk about who's going to see the biggest impact, of course, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 631, our top story this half hour. Lengthy lawsuit between Gallatin County and the city of Bozeman finally being settled after years of going back and forth. MTN's Edgar Cedillo takes a closer look. The legal dispute between the city of Bozeman and Gallatin County regarding the multi-million dollar Oak Street improvement project is finally settled. And now both sides say they're ready to get back to work. That getting this lawsuit behind us is a relief, to be honest with you. It, 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 it packs it away and allows us to really concentrate on the things that uh, we were elected to do. The lawsuit, which makes Skeleton County pay for a little over $900,000, is what the city of Bozeman says is a fair share of the total $6 million project, and the county has already paid around $600,000 under protest. It won't, it won't raise anybody's taxes. It just reallocates money that we have to a different purpose. Skinner says the money is being reallocated from areas like open space. Something else that's really been upsetting to me is that money comes out of open space money, which could have been used, almost a million dollars could have been used to purchase conservation easements. So while a direct cost to taxpayers won't be seen, it's those reallocations where taxpayers may notice. Costs associated uh, with this action uh, will be uh, footed by uh, either Gallatin County or Bozeman residents. So yes, the, the taxpayers unfortunately were uh, involved in that. And the court also awarded the city partial attorney fees, which came out to just a little over $46,500. Both the city and county now agree that they are glad that this lawsuit is finally behind them. I mean, we're going to work professionally on everything else that we work on, and this isn't going to affect, I don't think, our business relationship between the city and county because we've been having this fight for years. Outside City Hall, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. 633 now, it's shaping up to be one of the most expensive holiday seasons ever. Inflation, hiking, everything from food to gas, even Christmas trees. MTN's David J looks at how it's affecting shoppers. A national survey shows that Thanksgiving dinners may be up about 14% compared to last year. Some of those other surveys say maybe 20%. We came out here to town and country to find out from management and customers that it may not have a big effect on the Thanksgiving celebrations. It's a busy time at grocery stores this time of year, and many seem to be finding what they need for Thanksgiving. Everything seems to be available, at least where we're from, and prices might be a little bit higher, but I guess in the whole scheme of things, everything's gone up, so it's just something we work with. We shop a lot at Costco and stuff too, but for like stuff like this, we come here. But yeah, it's been great. I mean, I think it's fine. You know, it takes you a little bit longer when you come to a place, you know, for the first time, but yeah, I am finding everything that I need. The 36th Annual American Farm Bureau Federation Survey shows a Thanksgiving meal has increased 14% compared to last year with turkeys increasing 24%, pumpkin pie mix 7%, and sweet potatoes 4%. A Farm Bureau economist cites inflationary pressure, difficulty predicting demand during COVID, high global demand for food, and supply chain issues. A pie crust, for example, has multiple ingredients. So if there's an increase in the cost of eggs, if there's an increase in the cost of packaging um, for any of the ingredients, uh, an increase in the cost of gas to transport any of those ingredients, to the pie crust manufacturer, it all adds up. Prices are definitely going up. Um, we're doing our best and trying to order in bulk, things like that, that'll help keep them low. Keegan McCarthy, assistant store manager at Town & Country says, well, low supplies have been reported nationwide. 
Town and country has been able to keep Thanksgiving items stocked. Being able to have it all is nice. We'll celebrate it just like we always do. When it comes to holidays, prices always go up. You just pick and choose a little bit wiser. In Billings, David J, MTN News. 635, there's a chance you or someone you know hitting the road this week for Thanksgiving. Perhaps you're looking more closely at the price of gas, even wondering if the White House could do more to provide relief. Our Joe St. George with a closer look at the options or lack of options the president has. It's the week of Thanksgiving, and you know what that means. Hitting the road. AAA expects 53 million Americans to travel this week, a 13% spike from last year. Road trips, though, mean frequent fill-ups, and gas is much higher now than it was this time last year. The national average currently sits around $3.41 a gallon. Last year, it was around $2.12. Perhaps the price is leaving you wondering if Washington can do anything. Taisha in Baltimore is certainly wondering that. She's a door Dash driver. It's like I got to keep paying gas in the car every day. Like it's just terrible. The prices keep going up. But can President Biden actually do anything about the high price of gasoline? In short, the answer is yes. He does have some options, but it's unclear if taking any action would actually make a difference. Option number one: order an investigation. Last week, President Biden actually did that, asking the Federal Trade Commission to see if energy companies are manipulating the price. That, however, isn't guaranteed to deliver any real results, and investigations take time. Option number two, pressure other countries to pump more oil. The White House has done that as well, but so far, many oil-enriched countries in the Middle East haven't listened. The United Arab Emirates' energy minister has called on Americans to remain calm. Option number three, tap into our country's petroleum reserves, which are reserved for emergencies. So far, President Biden has not done that, even though many have called for it. Currently, the U.S. has over 600 million barrels in secret storage near the coast of Louisiana and Texas. Analysts have said, though, releasing the barrels may only make a difference for a short period of time. The president of the United States currently does not have any authority to force American energy companies to produce more, and there is little to suggest he ever would. After all, his administration has repeatedly called for less fossil fuels to be used in order to help our climate. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Well, speaking of Thanksgiving travel, Dr. Anthony Fauci says many families can enjoy a normal Thanksgiving this year. Says those who are fully vaccinated can feel safe about gathering without masks. Dr. Fauci does warn people may still need to wear masks indoors in cases where the vaccination status of others is unknown. 638, uh, we're going to take a break.